And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at bedpans and broomsticks. What a lovely name. Obviously, it's a take on the bed knobs and broomsticks movie that came out a while ago. I guess most people wouldn't even know about it these days. And bedpans. It's a nursing home. Four people, or up to four people, will be playing elders. Old folks who are trying to escape from this nursing home. And one person will be playing this staffer. So you can play one-on-one -on -one or four-on-one, -on -one, up to five players. This is by Frederick Moyerson. He's the same guy who designed both Ninja and Nuns on the Run. This is another game of hidden movement and trying to catch people. That seems to be his specialty. Is this one good like Nuns on the Run or not so good like Ninja? Let's find out. A start tile is placed in the middle of the table, and this is the beds that everyone's sleeping in, and each person has given two tiles for their person. One of them has a black dot. That's the real person. The other one's the decoy. So what you'll do is you'll place those two people in the space on your bed. So we got, here's Emma, and this is Alex, and here we have Lee, and I already put in Selma. Each person is also given a board of their color. Now, on a player's turn, there's the one person is going to also be the doctors and the nurses, the staff, but they're not involved in the game necessarily right away. On a person's turn, what you can do is you're first allowed to move your decoy to where your regular person is. You can look at them to know. So let's say my decoy is all the way somewhere else in the building. I can move them and I can shuffle them around so the other player doesn't know. But you can only move the decoy to your real one. And this will happen often if the staff person finds out who your decoy is. You can then move your decoy immediately to where your real person is, mix them up. Then, players are going to be moving. Now, when players move, they're going to roll three dice. These dice have two ones, two twos, and two threes. You'll roll them and pick the two lowest numbers. So, this means I can move four spaces. So, I can move four spaces with my guys. Now, when I move, and I move into a spot where I can see into another room, and these are old folks, so they can't really see very far. They can only see three spaces. Then the staff person will draw tiles and is going to put those tiles so that they match up uh, with the rooms that are able to be seen. Now the tiles don't have to match up. You're trying to match doorways here, but you don't have to worry about will they match nicely. Like, see, I can do this sort of stuff if I want to. Now, when these tiles are drawn, there's a couple things. If a desk is in any of the areas, so here's a desk here and here's a desk here, then a staffer is put on the desk. Actually, this desk is a black one, so the doctor comes out. <laughs> also, when you see these exit symbols show up, uh, when a certain number of them shows up, I think it's the third one, then the person who's playing the staffers will draw a random elevator tile and hook that up instead, and then they will draw the other elevator tile that matches that one, and they'll place it on another four. Having stuff on two fours means players can go up and down the elevators to the fours. And eventually, when enough of these symbols are, the staffer is going to have to put an exit out and they'll put that on the bottom four. So the player will have to either use the elevator or the stairs to get down. And there's two matching elevator stair tiles. And get out one of three different exits. All three exits will eventually be placed. So that's the goal. Your goal is not to get your decoy out. Your goal is to get out your, your regular person while the staffers are trying to stop you. If the staffers ever get two staffers into the same location as a patient, they can subdue that patient, which if it is uh, the real guy, they send them back to bed, or if it's a decoy, well, haha, ha, it was just a decoy. Um, and the doctor by themselves can stop, can send a patient back. Now, when the staffers move, when the player moves the staffers, they can move three staffers. The first staffer they move moves the higher of the two of the dice results, so they move five. And if you move the doctor, you always use the red die and then the lower of the two white dice. Yeah, I know that's a little confusing even to me. 
Now, that's essentially the, the game, but there's also stuff, and players can play stuff on their turns. Um, at the beginning of the game, one stuff is placed here, but as each room is discovered, you'll be placing two stuff in it, maybe less, but usually you'll place two in it. When you discover the stuff, and either player can get it, the staffers or the folks who are trying to escape, you'll look and see what this stuff does. For example, here, this one says, an elder and a decoy may move through a space as if it had no staffers in it. Normally you have to move into a staffer and stop uh, when moving. And one of the cool things is each tile has a letter on it. You'll notice that one had a T on it. On your card here, it will tell you when you play that. So this one, you play it and at the end of the turn, you remove it. Some will be instant and some will be permanent things that stay in place. And then the color of the tile tells you who it affects. It also tells you how you play the game here. And in fact, these tiles can be flipped over to give each of these people a special ability that they can use and a slight variant uh, turn sequence. Now, there's a lot of cool stuff tiles. Let's take a look at a few of them. Now, these are just some of the stuff. There's a lot of stuff in this game. Here's a puddle. You put a, a puddle token, which just happens to be yellow on the floor, which stops movement although there's a way to get to clean it. Uh, steroids, you can give one of the staffers steroids where by themselves they can neutralize one of the elders, one of the people escaping. Here, an elder and a decoy must move two spaces closer to the closest bed. Here you can move a staffer one space to the closest bed. Here a staffer or an elder move their decoy one space less this turn. Or a power chair, an elder or decoy can move two space in any direction. You can have a, you can basically lock a door, in which case you'll put down numbers on that door that a player has to, the staffer would have to turn over in order to get out through that door. And each of the elders also starts with one of these tokens. What this does is as the game progresses, you can use these to go through a wall. You know, there's a, there was a secret door there. And you also have ways to find more of these as time goes by. There's also ways to jam doors shut so that the, uh, nobody can go through them. So that's basically the game. You're, the, the staffer has to catch the elders a number of times equal to uh, the number of players in the game. So if there's three players in the game, I would have to catch elders three times. Each time you get caught, you get sent back to a bed that matches your color that's on the board, and then again, you're trying to get out. If an elder gets out, that person is the person who wins the game. All right, so bedpans and broomsticks. First of all, this game is, uh, the word I, I, I think I'm looking for is that it's, it's simple. Uh, that, that sounds odd, but what I mean is many times when you play these games, even a game that's mass market like Scotland Yard, there's all this deduction like, where is the person? Where did they go? Who is this? Here you have as the staffer, is that the decoy or is that the decoy? And you really don't know. You can guess, but you're just kind of guessing. Um, other than that, this game is just a madcap of playing of stuff. Yeah, stuff is what these tiles are called, and that as a meaning through rules. And you can play a stuff now, and they have this, it's, it's really kind of silliness. They have this, you may, uh, this is the turn sequence. You can place your decoy with your elder, then you may play stuff's markers, and each player can play stuff markers, then you can move your people. Then you can play stuff markers, and each other person can play stuff markers. On a staff player, you can play stuff markers, and it's like, come on, just tell people you can play these anytime. It just, instead of saying, would you like to play stuff markers? Would you like to play stuff markers? Would you? Oh my goodness, will that slow the game down and it becomes a real drag. Just play stuff markers. Um, sure, there could be some timing issues, but it's not that big of a deal. These stuff markers are wild all over the place and really can change the game. <laughs> you want to get these stuff markers. They're very useful and they will help you, but the layout of this is random. As, and as you go through, apparently no one knows how the nursing home was made. And I do think it's humorous that they added this whole old people thing in where you can't see more than three spaces, you can't communicate with other people, supposedly, because as soon as they got out of sight, you forget that they existed and you forget you were working together. So you can only communicate if you're in the same space. Um, so the, that's that theme coming through and the artwork is great, um, the components are okay, and the game actually comes with two sets of, four sets of tiles for each person. Uh, you have doubles of the one with a dot, one without. They also come with square ones, and they have these so that you can place these in stand-up counters and move them around and hide the dot in the stand-up counter. I would have preferred 
if they had actually just taken these tiles and made them better quality because punching them out was not easy and it's really if you want to be a jerk about it you can look at the tile and see which one see the differences between them so you would need to get a nail clippers and make sure the tiles are perfectly similar so that you when you're guessing which one's which you don't mess up I don't know I, I think I would have rather had some wooden discs with stickers on them or something so that they looked exactly the same but anyhow um, the game just though is real like it's almost like a take that game as a board game like aha I did this I put a puddle here well aha, I have a walker I'm gonna move around that aha I caught you here and yeah it's 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 funny and it's interesting and it's not a bad game but neither is it a great game it's kind of a game I think teenagers will like it because of the theme and and you get to play all these cool tiles, but any kind of strategy or tactics you have can be totally messed up every turn by the placement of a tile or by a special uh, stuff that the staffer can do. I mean, there's like a, a tile. You can only move one staffer this turn. Well, yay. Hooray, I get to move one person. I was just about to catch somebody, but because you played the tile at the right time in the right place. And so it's interesting. It's... You, I mean, there's that laughter when you catch someone, and it's a decoy, and that makes the person who was a decoy feel good, and the person playing the staffers feels good when you catch the real person. You know, that, there's that entertaining bit, that hidden perspective, but it's not as well done as other games. At the same time, it's not poorly done. The game is, is very good for what it is. This is one of those ones I would give a six rating to, right? It's enjoyable, but I didn't think it was anything spectacular and there's a good chunk of luck in it. I also think this dice rolling mechanism, you're like, oh, that's cool, roll three dice, move the, the, the lower two, unless you're a doctor, in which case you do the red and one of the whites, or unless you're the first staffer, then you pick the higher two. Why couldn't they have just given, uh, why roll three dice and pick the lower two? It, it seems like they could have done odds a little bit better and had a single die for each person to roll and maybe give the doctor a different die. I don't know. It, I'm kind of nitpicking here, but overall, like I said, good, but not great. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.